Welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things <laughs> going on in the world of Linux. I am Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant. Yes. Yeah, man. And everyone can see that we are missing a Pedro. Joe but he will Pedro. be back next week. Pedro's dead. <laughs> He's never coming back. You chased him away. <laughs> no, I don't do that. He just peaced out, man. He's like, oh, yeah, it's good to know. But hey, man, um, everyone watching live, joining us, uh, we got a big, chunky show to talk about. Well, we're going to talk about some of the um, AMD stuff. I know that's exciting news, but I didn't get a chance to uh, take a look at any of the reviews. And let's, let's face it, no one can buy one right now. But yeah, yeah they, they, <laughs> they've matched AMD. You've matched parity with NVIDIA, just not in a good way. But What's new with you, Joe? You got anything fun going on? Yes, I do. So I finally got a hold of a Raspberry Pi 400 personal computer kit. Yay! I finally found a U.S. seller that had restocked. And uh, as everyone knows out there, they had been sold out here in the U.S. for a while. So <laughs> I was just happy to get a hold of one. I'm excited about it. <laughs> Has there ever been a Raspberry Pi launch where they maintain stock? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. They they always need a lot more than they think, because, <laughs> or they can produce in time. <laughs> right. I mean, that's kind of what I'm thinking about because uh, I'm thinking even back from the first one, Pi two, Pi three, definitely the Pi zero. Yeah. Pi zero W. They're just gone. Like you, you're like oh, there's a new announcement. Oh, they're available for sale. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll try to buy one in a few months. Is always my first thought. Like even with that keyboard, I, I'm glad you were able to find one. I wouldn't even thought about trying to get one. Um, <laughs> yeah. Maybe after <laughs> like January or something like that. But hey, mm -hmm. I got a couple of things over here um, playing around with. I did finish a uh, new interfacing Linux that is with the video portion, 99, 90% of the video. There's a teardown in the final version of a uh, really one of the cheapest uh, interfaces I could find. And it's a new one box from like 2006. So that's up for patrons if you want to go dig around and find that. But I got this. I got this. Yes, I got a me. You hit the wrong button, old man. This. <laughs> I finally uh, found one of these at a reasonable price. This is a um, Golden Age Project Pre-73. It's a hipster microphone. Nice. It's transformer-based, man. Um, it's, like, it's like a Neve 1073 clone opened it up. Look at the circuits, the input and output. And I'm like... Let's say it's 1073 inspired, but I can finally, finally, Jill, mm -hmm. I can have a warm, rich, bassy voice. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> well, your, your voice doesn't need any more bass on it. <laughs> that's, that's the joke. Um, yes. <laughs> but, yeah, they're, they're pretty decent. The um, junior version is just a stripped down, um, you know, you have two knobs to deal with, which is great. And, uh, yeah. I'm glad that showed up. I got it for a really good price used um, from Guitar Center, which apparently is thinking about uh, not being around. But uh, yeah, oh, I want to give a company this. This is not a plug. This is not at all. This is here's a free plug. Oh, we ordered just a flat ether noodle. I needed it for an access point. And I got to run it up a wall and you know, it was standard cheap. I was like, cat six cheap. Like three meters, like $9. I'm like, okay, this is what I expected, right? Normally you order from Amazon. I didn't pay attention to the vendor because it's just for an access point. I'm like, as long as it works, we're good. Nice. I expected this to come in a bag. I'm like, hmm, there it is, done. Like, it's a big box. I got a big box, Joe. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, mine came in a box too. <laughs> and with all the, the this little uh, ties and everything. <laughs> from Cable Geeker. Because apparently this is the one that I just ordered the first one that showed up. And it was like nine dollars. And it came with like ties and yep. zip ties. A bunch of stuff I'll never use, but I thought that was an unsided bonus. It kind of surprised me. Ah, I'm like, yeah, oh, well, that's they're... great. I'll never use that. <laughs> Well, they know if you're buying a flat one, you might want to put it up a wall or under a carpet. So <laughs> it comes with fasteners. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I ordered it because I'm scared of round cables. <laughs> that could have been a thing. But hey, we got good news, everyone. Uh, our long national nightmare is over. YouTube DL is back. The um, 
RIAA uh, Streisand effect. Yay. So all they've accomplished mm -hmm. was making sure a lot of people now know about YouTube DL. That's pretty much <laughs> yes. what they accomplished <laughs> in the end. I was reading through this. Um, why did they take it down in the first place? Well, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Uh -huh. And uh, here's, here's really like the best I could uh, find. Like looking through the request. It looks like they were saying like the rolling cipher mechanism that is used with um, YouTube BL was like, hey, that's illegal. And uh, now the EFF stepped in, Joe, like, no, it's not. Get out of here. Go away. Yeah. Well, this was uh, just so such wonderful news and way to go to EFF. Um, I actually donated recently because of the YouTube DL fiasco and and hoping that they would help us. And I knew they would. And uh, so in in the EFF's rebuttal letter that Ven just showed on um, um, letter to the GitHub YouTube DL takedown, they state the legitimate reasons of fair use, which we actually, we've been talking about here on LWW and we did back in October when uh, this all took place. And, uh, the, you know, their EFF stated, using it to back up videos on your own YouTube channel is legitimate. It's, it's great for downloading tutorials for instruction and for use for online content for creators and for people who need to watch videos on computers that can't run or don't have access to a web browser and the internet. And that's, that's, those are exactly, you know, the reasons that we stated why this is an important piece of software and uh, there's legitimate reasons for using YouTube DL. Well, I'm sorry, I was downloading some movies off YouTube, would you say? <laughs> no, yeah. I, I mean, this is what we all expected. It's all for not. I, I, I guess the conspiratorial part of my brain is like, well, what's a real game here? Because they had to know that this wasn't something that they could have uh, succeeded with outside of just a temporary inconvenience. I'm just going to say yeah. good on EFF. I'm just bothers me because it's so unnecessary to go through this and yes. it wasn't a proper use of the dmca it bothers yeah, me too but definitely hey, i'm glad it's back i don't think it was ever removed from any um distributions repository i know it was recently updated on <laughs> debian yes when it was down on GitHub. I'm like oh okay <laughs> hey we're glad that that worked out for the best a uh, little mm -hmm. bit of news Real quick, uh, new NVIDIA drivers, Yay. right? Uh, this is 455-4501. These came out last night. And, you know, aside from, they fixed two games, um, did some updates for Life is Strange 2 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And apparently there were some Vulcan issues and there were some swap chain issues with G-Sync. But what I wanted to know was, can I finally use CUDA with the recent 5.9 kernel? You can. Mm, yay. Was, <laughs> I just installed these. You know, I've been holding off moving this box to 5.9 because of that. It finally worked. So I can use DaVinci nice. and all that fun stuff. But um, another quick mention is there was an update last Friday. If you have any black magic hardware capture cards and systems like that, they've also been updated to work with kernel 5.9. Good on them. I'm very happy about that. And, uh, It'd be nice if everyone would just open source everything, wouldn't it? You know, so we didn't have to wait on companies to build their horrible, nasty, big, icky proprietary drivers and their modules. But hey, whatever. It works. I'm happy with it. Awesome. What about you, Jill? Um, are yeah. you running? What kernel are you running? Um, I've got 5.7, so. I, 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 <laughs> I was running 5.7. I was running 5.7 because yeah. everything <laughs> compiled under it and it didn't throw Yeah. Me. It's stable. <laughs> but um, I like to cover some audio stuff every now and then because, you know, back here, there's like a stack of stuff I've got off eBay because I was curious, like, hey, does it work? Can we make use of it on Linux? Can musicians kind of get into some of the stuff for the cheap? So I got to it with interfacing links. And every now and then I run across something that just kind of blows me away, man. Um, there's a, it's actually a reasonably new USB multi-channel interface of the uh, Tascam mm. 1608. But on top of that, it's got like an internal mixer, so you can do EQ, compression, and all that. Well, this dude, this dude got one. He's like, nothing works. I don't like this. And he does what Linux people do. He reverse engineered it. 
So <laughs> awesome. you have access <laughs> to your compression, EQ, mutes, your solos, all of the DSP internal mixing. And no, this isn't one of those hipster firewire devices I love so much. This is regular USB, so you can just plug it in. But you will need the custom kernel driver for it. And if you don't want to go through this system, there's also a LV2 plugin that you can throw into your DAW to get a hold of everything. And I like seeing stuff like this because this gives you, like, let's say you don't want to set up like a door and all this fancy stuff, but you still want to do compression EQ and set up X minus and stuff like that. You can do all of that on the interface by itself. Like, say we were doing podcasts like this, it'd be feasible to set that up. So I wanted to get that dimension for anyone out there shopping for things. But it's not as beautiful. Uh, yes. As, as this. This, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there is a beautiful new theme for Debian called Homeworld, which is inspired by the wonderful German Bauhaus movement from the 19th century. And the the for those of you that don't know, the Bauhaus School of Art combined the aesthetics of modern art, design, and architecture with artists like Wassily Kandinsky. Kandinsky and Paul Klee, um, who are two of my favorites and are ones that I make sure my art students and animation students know about, <laughs> definitely. So this modern yet classic art form is really, it's a fitting tribute to the grand old Linux distro Debian. <laughs> so I think it was just very, they're very beautiful job and uh, they look really nice, and I will use them on all my Debian systems now. <laughs> it's aqua. Yeah, it is kind of. It is kind of. <laughs> I don't know. I, I try to get in the ballpark with colors. I'm like, yeah, it's it's dark, I guess. Um, it needs more purple. Ah, okay. It needs, it needs well, purple and like brown. Purple and brown. Well, we'll call it, it Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It is nice having a, a dark theme uh, for Debian, definitely. And uh, yeah, so if you look at this art, actually the artwork um, that Juliet Taka did in this uh, theme, it's very, very much uh, Kandinsky, um, one of my favorite artists. So that I just talked about, because um, it, it, it has the look of architecture flattened in two dimensions. And, you know, that's one of the hallmarks of the Bauhaus music, um, Bauhaus uh, School of Art. So it's really just, I was really impressed with this theme. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at that. It looks like somebody stabbed a fez with a uh, olive on a cocktail <laughs> stick. But, hey. It, yeah. <laughs> it's thing. Kind of like I said in the pre-show, I, I know some people really dig themes, and that's like a big thing of, like, uh, I like the overall theme, built-in theme from District. <laughs> For me, it's great. I run Debian, and as long as I can change the wallpaper to just like blank, I'm good. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, you like the blacks. <laughs> it's just I I don't like flashy, wishy stuff, and like yeah, yeah. Then likes the absence of color of which black is. Sufficiency. Okay. <laughs> Retro freedom, man. <laughs> It's, it's like a laptop for hipsters. I'm just kind of kidding, but they're back. You might have heard of them before. They were down for like mm. six months. But if you were maybe just a little bit worried about, you know, proprietary BIOS and stuff like that, uh, this could be something to look into, man, um, because these are older laptops. You know, they're not brand new and on state of the art they're being repurposed. I'm a huge fan of that, but they're all running Libreboot for the BIOS replacement yeah. and Triscoll's the Linux distro that's being shipped one. You get them worldwide. Uh, they're all out of the UK. They accept Bitcoin and they come with a two year warranty. But what are we looking at, man? They have a T400, the, the X200. T400. Yeah. They got that yeah. one with that screen that always terrified me. I'm like, I broke that, <laughs> the X200. I actually do have that laptop. <laughs> But they're yeah, reasonably, so. pr I mean, they're older laptops, but they're not crazy priced, like 300 pounds, 200 pounds, somewhere in that, right? Yeah. And they're powerful enough to wa to to run any modern day uh, Linux OS. That's why so many of us Linux users love the ThinkPads for that reason. And they're one of Stallman's favorite as well. So that makes makes sense that Triscoll is is on these laptops. <laughs> Have you ever- um, Richard saw Stallman approved. With the- um, <laughs> 
replace the BIOS or on a system with the open yeah. firmware type stuff. I've thought I, about I it. I have. But I've but always not, not run on... into the like. I've also thought better of it. I'm like, yeah. I have, but not on my ThinkPads. <laughs> on your ThinkPads. Yeah. Mm. Trying to think, it was a oh oh yeah, it was a ASUS Republic of Gamers, I believe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still on there. <laughs> now that's pretty neat, man. Um, yeah, hundred dollars from Core Boot. Uh, what else? Uh, I'm reading off your notes, Pedro. I'm stealing from you. Um, I'm doing what you do. Uh, friendly. Oh, you get a LibreSoft uh, friendly Wi-Fi card. Um, okay, so they're going to be throwing that in there. Yeah, Core Boot. I guess this would be an alternative uh, if you didn't want to spend the cash on like a new System seventy six box, right? Yeah, no, it's perfect. And you can even get one with the, the dock, which comes with extra USB ports and a CD, DVD, and, and uh, all the uh, classic connections you need. As a lot of us Linux users still use the older, you know, connections because we need them. <laughs> so we're developing, developing and uh, running software on, uh, you know, systems that, that need uh access to the older ports as well as the newer and you you can live that old life that i used to live uh they're the same <laughs> they come with like two batteries because i used to have a bag of batteries i used to fly constantly and um mm -hmm. that that's one thing i would miss like if i bought a modern laptop because mm -hmm. i like being able to swap out batteries yeah it's very very nice hmm. And actually, the the ThinkPads have really good battery life. Yeah. So yeah, for even how old they are, my old ThinkPads still hold up. There's, st I'm still getting you know around six hours on most of them. Well, that's, and they're old machines. You know, I mean, if you need something, mm -hmm. you know, for your basic computing and stuff like it, and you don't have to rip it apart and get the heat gun out to pry the battery out, you click, yes, slam another one in, and just you're done. And that's the beauty of the ThinkPad. Everything is accessible, you know, almost everything, even if you, if you need to replace the BIOS on a lot of the models, it's easy to get to. Yeah. So it's easy to replace, you know, hard drives, you can convert them to SSDs easily, add more RAM, um, at, you know, change out the batteries easy. And that's, that's the beauty. That's why it's, it's in the arsenal of the Linux user, <laughs> the ThinkPads, <laughs> they're great. So what's Jeeping? Yeah, so this is really cool. This is ping, but graphically in um, in the the CLI in the terminal. So um, it, yeah, so it's it's ping in graph form instead of text output that actually moves quickly in the terminal when you normally use a ping and the website say google.com. Uh, I actually, what's nice about this is that you can compare uh, s several websites at once. So I G pinged linuxgamecast.com, google.com, and our linuxchicksla.org site and compared them. And uh, it was nice to see that our LGC ping was pretty much equal to google.com uh, for me with an average of 3.5. One three milliseconds, while the Linux Chicks LA ping was fourteen point nine oh two average, which makes sense because it it it's uh, not on as nice a server. <laughs> where, where do you host as, that? In, like Mordor? <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's hosted on a droplet. So <laughs> yeah, uh, Linux yeah. Gamecast is like edge cache throughout Cloudflare too. So that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing. But I was really impressed by this because you know I use ping all the time and to uh, to check you know internet speeds and and our milliseconds with the outside world, and it's just nice to have it graphically inside of the command line in CLI. So I think that's really pretty nice. neat. Um, I gotta say, a lot of times with like the terminal GUI stuff, a hundred percent, like even this, I, I played with it. I looked at mm -hmm. it. I'm like, that's neat, but that's as far as I ever end up going with it because at the end of the day, I I just need those number digits. Like, mm, what's that ping? And what do I normally use ping for? That's something that I was thinking to myself, and that's like ping is my go-to way of like, is this thing connected to the internet? Yes, exactly. That's that's why I started using it um, years ago. You know, even in the Unix days. So that was that was the way you you knew you were connect, connecting with the outside world. That's a, is there hope? 
can I get to something? Can I ping something? Okay, there's yes. a chance. Then maybe <laughs> I've just clearly messed up other things because it can see the outside world. Uh, yeah, go check that out. All that'll be in our show notes after the fact. I saw a couple of people mm-hmm. in our community in Discord uh, have Pine phones. Yeah. So this is really awesome. Uh, Pine64 uh, Pine collaborated with collaborated with KDE and has, has released a new Pine phone, the KDE Community Edition. Yay, this is really cool. And like previous Community Editions, it has most of the features that you would expect from a smartphone. And of course, you can follow the progress of, of its development and features in the Plasma mobile blog. And I was really excited about this because I, I had I had actually tested an early version of Plasma Mobile on my Nexus 5 back in 2016. And I was really impressed with how smooth and stable it was even then. None of the functions worked, like the, the phone calling and, and text and all that, but but it was it ran nice and stable and I used it as a Wi-Fi device. <laughs> So there, you know, there's so much great potential here. And now that it has, has been released on the Pine phone, you know, it's maturing into the phone OS I was hoping it would be. So this is, this is really beautiful. Actually, this is the Pine phone I am thinking of getting. Um, I've, I have UP ports um, already on my OnePlus. So I would like to get, um, I think the, the Plasma version of the Community Edition. I love or the Manjaro. I, I love this <laughs> podcast thing. That that is the most heinous collaboration of colors I've seen in quite yes. some time. Lots of white. <laughs> well, I, I like this poo brown mixed with orange. Oh, Accented okay. With just random I see. white and blue. I, I like yeah. that. I'm down with that. Um, <laughs> that's brave. That's a brave color scheme. <laughs> but yeah, it works with KDE Connect and um, has that synergy. And it has the cutoff switch switch for the uh, the sound and the the camera, and so it's a secure phone, which is really nice, just like the previous versions. Well, I see a bunch of stuff on the KDE page um, with the announcements. I'm just not seeing any link. Where can I go buy one? Hmm. Hmm. I might want to. Throw, I went. Throw that I in went there, to KDE. The, I'm just saying. Yeah. The page. <laughs> yeah, I went to the Pine Phone site. So. <laughs> Buying sixty four dollars. What are these? Um, yeah, like a hundred bucks, hundred and twenty bucks, or yeah, correct. And a hundred and and twenty with the, um, believe a hundred and twenty with the the dock. Okay, well, but I I want that tablet. <laughs> I really want that tablet. Pine it's, tab. <laughs> I, I want a pine tab with a ten p screen, and I'll I'll give you two hundred and fifty three hundred bucks for it. Because I am so in the market for a new tablet right now, and like I'm very quickly approaching the, I have legitimate reasons for a new one outside of like I just want a new one. So, yeah. <laughs> but seeing the progress on the Pine phone, no, I've had a lot of people come back and say, pretty much the same thing universally. And like, that's what I assumed. I don't personally own one, so it's hard for me to comment on it directly. But and they're like, these are still very much development devices. You know, these. Um, you don't pick one up and expect full functionality. Things are still getting worked out and they're still um, being improved upon. So do keep that in mind when you order. Yeah. One. I think Definitely. that's fair to say. Yeah. Yeah. So great phones. We were great having development. A talk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's interesting to watch them go from, well, legitimately when they were, when they were first announced. I'm like, this is a tinker toy. Now, yeah. Now it's become a serious development platform. Yes. <laughs> now it's a tinker toy with an ecosystem, which is better. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, may, it makes me very glad to see stuff like that. And especially when it matures and I start thinking like, what are they going to be able to push out um, five years from now? And that's, that's when it's going to get real interesting and to have like a legitimate, like maybe even possibly mass marketable uh, Linux based mobile device as opposed to oh you got android exactly. and you have ios player yeah. three player three needs to yes. enter the field <laughs> we need to and you know pine has positioned themselves as uh the company that can do it definitely they can do you think we could run slackware on it though no i think that will be a thing 
especially this uh, this uh, distro called SlackX. Maybe we'll see a SlackX port of the on the Pine Phone. So this is actually one of my favorite distros. It's the Slackware Linux based SlackX, and it has You're trying to been talk me into installing. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it has been released with the latest Enlightenment desktop in Linux kernel 5.9. Awesome. And it's the only live distro to use the latest Enlightenment version 0.24.2. So, and it's the only Slackware based live distro right now that uses Linux kernel 5.9. And uh, Who some uses what is it? Linux 5.9. <laughs> uses... <laughs> well, now that that we have CUDA drivers, <laughs> <laughs> That'll run nice on 5.9. I think a lot of us will. <laughs> Who uses so, NVIDIA, Joe? <laughs> yeah. So what the the key uh, uh, takeaway from SlackX, one of the big deals of, of it, actually, is that it comes with the Refracta snapshot installer. So you can build your own Slackware-based distro with the new version of Enlightenment. And I was really impressed because right out of the box with the uh, live live uh, USB, Enlightenment automatically auto-detected my three-monitor setup. That is a first for a live distro with Enlightenment. So this new version of Enlightenment, they improved that a lot. Although, you know, Enlightenment for years was is very good about about setting up um, multi monitors and multi monitor, and in fact, it was one of the first window managers that allowed you to set up multi monitors under Linux. Hmm. So this is, you know, a really it was a, I was really excited about it. That means I, you know, I can game on three monitors right out of, out of the box. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, the other cool thing is it's Slackware. So Slackware usually comes pre-installed with lots of classic apps like XMMS, Cine, and MPlayer. And uh, SlackX is no exception. So thank you to the developers of SlackX. I've been really enjoying the distro. It's kind of interesting. And, you know, they, they got yeah. all the uh, sharp dangerous bits filed off of uh, Slackware. So you can be like uh, Manjaro users that are like, hey, I run Arch. I'm like, yeah, yeah. technically. So you can be yeah. like, hey, I run Slack. Well, all right. And yeah, well, um, it Slackware now is so much easier to use because we have GSlapped, which is um, uh, like uh, the Synap Synaptic package installer. So it's very easy to use. You don't have to use the terminal anymore with yeah. Slackware unless you want to. But I like Slapped Get, so I'm still using Slapped Get. Slack but I <laughs> we were talking yes. in the um, pre-show for one five. I was trying to think of the last time I legitimately had a Slackware desktop set up, and I think it was like 2003. It's yeah, been wow. a minute. It's, it's uh, been a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had SlackX uh, running on one of my systems for a while, but I still have my original install of Slackware on my <laughs> 486. Oh, <yeah. laughs> so. I mean, Slackware is one of the things I started. I, was, I distinctly remember installing um, pre 1.0 Slackware and like, all right, I'm yes. that. And, yeah, depackage and insamod all the things. You have the insamod yeah. to get your sound card to work. That, that, was that was a thing. A thing. That was absolutely 100% a thing. If you built it as a module and you weren't dumb and just built it directly into it. So like, oh, I messed that up. Let's recompile the kernel. That took a while. <laughs> yeah. Back in the oh, day. yes. Sometimes it was 24-hour process. Sometimes more. <laughs> so, beautiful people, uh, we are going to cut into a slice of pie. But before that, if you like what we do, we are completely community funded. So, shameless self promotions. There it is. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. If you like the cut of our jib, we got an extra hour of show for um, people who help us out each and every week. Access to our Discord. There's like six levels of nightmares and mayhem um, that you can get into. But we just want to thank you and uh, stick around for your names. In the credit. Also, yeah. we have t-shirts. Yes, you can buy LWW merch. Right. Yay. That's the thing. We have stickers. <laughs> we, we have slightly less naughty words that cover up worse ones. That's a kind of <laughs> Yes. That, that, that's, <laughs> that, that's my way around censorship. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> that's brilliant. Uh, thank you, all of you. You let us do this. So, And we're not like, this was brought to you by, I still refuse to do mattress ads, but Microsoft offer still stands. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me do let me do an ad for the Surface RT.
Yeah. Oh, and Steve Husband says in chat, uh, Patreon goal is a funeral for Pedro. <laughs> Great. Are, are you familiar? I, I feel like being like Donnie from, um, uh, we'll get into it. Check it out. We got to get into this before we get into it. Do you uh, believe in a slice of pie? Slice Big of pie, off. the, yeah, the bloody version, but with white instead. Over pie. <laughs> Dude, uh, this is from Hackaday, Adventures in Overclocking, which this is just silly. I love the idea of overclocking raspberry pies. I know it's a bit of a yes. thing, but this, this is, uh, this i fell in love with it one i was like okay what can i do we're just looking at because he wants to hot rod the pi 400 i'm like okay there's different ways to go about doing that over volting and um made a good point cheap pizza things you know those little um tin little bits that come with the little kits yeah don't bother with it don't bother <laughs> yeah. with it you got to bring Throw out the out. aluminium man you do yes you got to use science science zip ties to put them on I'm like okay th this is just getting fun and that's yeah. that's really all this is man um how how fast was he able to get it 2.5 yeah 2.5 it's pretty impressive <laughs> stay in a hair blue 70 c and this was by 400 now granted you're not gonna be able to get the you might not be able to get the case back on without yeah. hanging <laughs> off the side of it but come yeah. on why not and <laughs> So apparently the best place to use, you take some notes, Jill, the best place to use your new Pi 400 is going to be outside on a damp ground with a leaf on top of it. <laughs> with leaves on top of yeah. it. <laughs> that, that's how you weather. achieve maximum efficiency. <laughs> um, well, if, it, if it's cooler outside, it would help. <laughs> You're overclocking. You can get it up a little higher. Being able to keep it uh, I, I'd be curious because the SOC in the Pi 400 is a stepped revision i mean it is better than yes. what you would get in the pipe four it's the c revision mm -hmm. yeah I, yeah and i'm looking forward to playing with my pie and and i'm for sure gonna overclock it as well because oh, why yeah. not <laughs> yeah that, that could definitely be a thing uh the, the only thing i i think there's probably a large segment of me we saw the pipe 400 we're like oh that's gonna be fantastic i'm gonna wait for the air. Because, yeah, I mean, that, that, that night gig unit and a little portable one like that, man, I just keep one of those like next to the tire iron in my car. It's like my just in yeah. case box. If I need to plug it into something, that could be I, a thing. Yeah, I'm looking for the Pi 400 to have the put out the 8 gig version. So I know they probably will put out an 8 oh, gig version instead of the be. 4 gig. But yeah, so I can't I'm wait to get mine to so I can go outside and roll around in the leaves with it. Yeah. It'll be brilliant. <laughs> And, you know, I had overclocked my Raspberry Pi 3 Model B back in the day from 1.2 gigahertz to 1.5 gigahertz, and it's still running uh, fine. That's what I used for all our install fest at, for the Linux Chicks of Los Angeles, and it's still ticking along. So I think I played works. around with my Pi 3 mm -hmm. for a minute because there was mm. some OC scripted yeah. and... Then again, I didn't really care about melting it either, so I, there was no heat sinks or anything on it. I'm like, hey, look, get the thing. All right. And yeah. Then, then I gave it away. Enough. <laughs> like, if you're yeah. wondering about, like, all that pie camera kit, I'm like, here, you have it. So, um, <laughs> check this out. This is pie related. So, yes. have you ever wanted to stalk someone on the cheap? Did not want to buy <laughs> one of those fancy? No, uh, maybe you just, like, legitimately needed to track a package, or maybe you shipped someone in a package and you're trying to track them i don't know man yeah regardless <laughs> this is how you can build a raspberry pi gps tracker for effectively nothing man um what this does is it's just using sms so it doesn't need um internet connectivity like every five minutes it pings it sends a location and you can just like drop this in to about anything because it's super small because this is using a pi zero 16 gig sd card just a prepaid SIM, the wave share, yeah. the Bluetooth hat, and a little power bank. Look at it. So cute. It's so tracky. Aww, yeah. Um, I like the idea <laughs> of this just because if the best use case I've seen for this is people who are having problems shipping, people who do a lot of shipping. Yeah. And they're like, packages are use. getting lost. They're disappearing. We're going to drop a couple of these in there and find out where they really end up. So. I like this. Uh, plus, it's just neat. It's just neat. You get to play with things like that. I don't know. Put it. 
Can you think of like mm-hmm. any non illicit uses for it, Jill, other than packages? <laughs> Well, to maybe track someone you don't like. I don't know. No, non illicit. No. That, that would not fall under the category of legal. No. Yeah. Why would you track somebody that you just make sure they're far enough away from you? Like, yes. yes, yes. Well, you know, remember back in the day, Android had the functionality with the Google phones to be able to track them and uh, easily uh, from another phone. And uh, they removed that feature for security reasons. Did they think that? I remember there was the uh, yeah, Android I equivalent to like find my Android device. And... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, you could track other people too. So, but that mm. was, yeah, they took that out. <laughs> Probably for the best. But this yeah. is something that you could make. And uh, exactly. Easy she, and quick. This mm-hmm. isn't like something you want to be sneaky with. Don't do that. Plus, it looks yeah. sketchy. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, but, I like it that it uses SMS too, which oh, is yeah. nice to ping you and uh, let you know where. What you're tracking, wh- exactly. where it is. Like, long as it can get um, cellular communications, like, you really got to be somewhere and yeah. like, not to pick up anything like that. And plus, you can do it prepaid, so you're not getting <laughs> like crazy bills. But exactly. my main use case is like, <laughs> if I was shipping something expensive, yes, I'd pack something mm-hmm. like that in it just for my own peace of mind. Especially when yeah. the person on the other end is like, I never got it. And like, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I mean, look at how cheap you can get the pie. Uh, five five dollars, well, five dollars for the non-Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. So a little bit more for the it's Wi-Fi like version. Nine but that's for the like, Wi-Fi. yeah, right. That's that's you know for your um, you know for your uh, being. <laughs> I couldn't come up with the word for it, <laughs> but uh, uh, for your uh, safety uh, of the package that you're delivering, it's 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 worth the you know under ten bucks. <laughs> Right. So. <laughs> also, we don't need to point this out, but just in case, don't take this through the airport. This is a zero TSA acceptance package. You will be disappeared. Do not, yeah. do not, do not put it in your oh. luggage. For your peace of mind, that's what I was peace looking for. Yes, so there we go. <laughs> Maybe you want to tell us about your peace of mind. You'd like to share that information. If you want to do that, head over to LinuxGameCast.com. We have a contact button. Smash that button, fam. And let us know. Just make sure you pick the right show because uh, that's how we keep trying. Pick LWDW for this one. Uh, Give us a name, an email, a subject, maybe a message if you're feeling saucy. (laughs) Jill, what do we got this week? Yeah, so this week, uh, this one actually comes from my, and I'll say it, this is my cousin Lisa, and who listens every week, and and I love her dearly. And she says, hey, Pedro, Halloween is over. Time to change Nicholas out of, of his Terror of Trilogy voodoo doll look. Because, <laughs> you know, he has the Nicholas Cage on uh, next to him on the podcast with the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> with that I think Nori put on it and I just saw Ven's corner with with the skeleton uh dressed up lol p.s I seen it change it has changed in the next vid have a blessed day <laughs> what are you talking yes. about <laughs> yeah so so Frank you know, he was in uh, Halloween form. Actually, he still is. <laughs> Frank's Frank in Christmas. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, do, do you not see the vampire I know, Christmas llama? I can, <laughs> I can see the vampire. Now, now I, I see that. it's It's been on there for a little bit. Mm-hmm. But he's still ho- holding the uh, trick-or-treat uh, <laughs> pumpkin. This Halloween doesn't stop for Frank. Every day is Halloween. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> And thank you again, Cousin Lisa, for watching every week and paying attention to all the things and pointing it out when it needs to be pointed out. (laughs) Way to go. (laughs) All all I'm hearing is somebody's got an issue with pumpkins. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, you you do notice that this time this uh, Ven is not wearing his uh, skeleton uh, Halloween shirt. (laughs) He's got Skeletons. his, he's, yeah, he's rocking his black right now. <laughs> this is why I don't wear anything but like black shirts, man. As soon as I wear something, people pick on me. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful people. We got to bounce out of here. But thanks for showing up. And uh, we're going to roll some credits, but we'll see you yeah. next week. If I can yes. get the right song queued up. <laughs> Maybe I even got the credits done correctly. Yeah. Yay. 
And yes, this is a Linux Gamecast original series hosted by Ben Stone and me and 99.9% ah. of the time Pedro, but he's not on this week. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you to our advisor, Vigilant Viking, and our beautiful executive producers, and our Chicago Kicks, kicks You Know What, <laughs> and our Sea Monsters, <laughs> and our Death Notes. Oh, Ben, I just realized it needs to say Jill and Steve, because Steve needs to be represented in those death notes <laughs> since you updated it. <laughs> so. It says what it says on your Patreon. No, you put Jill and Steve. Originally, you put Jill and I Steve. I did that before I changed the system where it pulls it automatically. So <laughs> It was just auto automatic now. Okay, <laughs> no problem. <laughs>